A wild political scandal that came to a dramatic culmination in Alabama today. The mild-mannered 74-year-old governor resigned this afternoon. He was facing impeachment over allegations that he used state resources to carry out and then conceal an extramarital affair with a former aide. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. It's beyond embarrassing. This is the voice of 74-year-old Alabama Governor Robert Bentley caught whispering sweet nothings to a woman who was not his wife. You know what, when, when I stand behind you and I, and, I, and I put my arms around you and I put my hands on your breast and, and I put my hands on you and just and pull you real close. On the other end of the line is Rebecca Mason, one of his longtime campaign consultants who's also very married. While their alleged affair was certainly no crime, the alleged cover-up was, and it's taken the governor from the state house to the big house, at least long enough to take this awkward booking photo. Police say he illegally used government and campaign resources to both hide the affair and pay his alleged girlfriend in a deal that will keep him from serving a long sentence he pleaded guilty to two charges failing to file a major campaign contribution report and knowingly converting campaign contributions for personal use he was fingerprinted and paid bond like a common criminal and then faced the music that's been wafting through the hallways of the legislature for two years i have decided it is time for me to step down as alabama's governor we know that Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Robert Bentley could not handle the power. The story reads like a bad romance novel. Hey, hey, listen, listen to me. Uh, take your earring off and let me kiss you here. All that sexy talk was coming from a dermatologist and a former deacon who ran for governor seven years ago, preaching the virtues of traditional family values. I've served my country, my state, and my patients with honesty and integrity. I'll do the same as governor. By his side was Diane, his loyal wife of nearly 50 years. He was sort of this very avuncular, almost grandfatherly figure. Bentley was new to politics and decided to hire someone with good experience in the media. Rebecca Mason was a former reporter. Someone, I was told it was his son, suggested to him that they hire this nice lady from the church to help. She was married and nearly 30 years his junior. Once Bentley won the election, her influence on the governor grew. Eventually she became his top advisor and that um, caused a lot of concern to people who worked for him. She flattered him, she flirted with him. All of a sudden, the church deacon was acting brand new. He started dressing better. One person who noticed this was his wife, who not only noticed the changes in her husband's wardrobe, but also noticed the changes in his demeanor. The first lady wasn't alone. People in the office said that the governor started acting strangely. They would walk into a room where the governor and Rebecca Mason were together, and both uh, the governor and Mason would uh, be startled as if they were doing something that they didn't want other people to see. In the spring of 2014, Governor Bentley sent a text meant for Mason to his wife, Diane. And it said, I love you, Rebecca. Bentley's wife was soon collecting evidence on her own. She got a hold of text messages between the two, where Bentley writes things like, I'm yours forever, and I love you so much, and took it a step further when she left her cell phone next to her husband and made sure it was recording while he called his alleged girlfriend. I, hey, I, I love that too. Put my, my hands under you. She had one of her aides download the iPhone recording to a laptop and then burn them onto a CD. And those CDs who actually had them and where they were became a, a bit of an obsession for Governor Bentley once he discovered that he had been recorded. Investigators say he went too far trying to keep his secret, accusing him of even using his police detail to go track down the steamy recording. Governor Bentley has attempted to put together a little Montgomery Mafia, intimidating people, harassing people, threatening people. And if you're going to do that, you best be good at it. Or he's not. It was very juvenile. It has become apparent to me that Rebecca Mason has wielded a level of influence over both the governor and state government that I have never seen 
in all my years of public service. All of this might have never come out if it weren't for Alabama's former top police officer, Spencer Collier, who went public last year. He says he was fired for refusing to cover up the governor's alleged affair. And I explained to Governor Benley it would be a crime if he has used state resources to facilitate a relationship or if he had used campaign funds to facilitate the relationship. The governor denied that he and Mason ever got physical. I want everyone to know, though, that I have never had a physical affair with Mrs. Mason. But there was no walking away from what he called inappropriate remarks. Mason resigned in March 2016. I said some inappropriate things, and I know that I did that. And so I'm just apologizing for that to her, and I'm apologizing to my family and to the state of Alabama. The whole mess was grit in the teeth of the state auditor and the state corrections officer who began filing complaints to the state ethics commission. An affair among two married people is not in and of itself a crime. Accusations are he used state resources to further that affair with the staffer, the senior staffer, and um, to cover it up. I just found some obvious signs that things were wrong. Uh, 120 days, you cannot raise money after the election's over. And I looked, and then he'd done that twice. This was unbelievable. Their complaints led to an investigation that produced this 131-page report released Friday by the House Judiciary Committee. It accused Bentley of an extensive abuse of power. Lawmakers in his own party called for his impeachment. Everybody wants to make a, a joke out of it, but for us, we're, we're living it and it's, it's just a, an absolute embarrassment. My district has suffered for the last two years because of my battle with Governor Bentley. The way you keep politicians straight is you watch them. As part of the deal he struck with prosecutors, Bentley has to pay back campaign funds he spent on Rebecca Mason, agree to never run for office again, and serve a year's probation. He walks away with his freedom, but it seems he's lost almost everything else. He's lost his wife. Um, she divorced him back in September of uh, 2015. Um, he's lost his children. Uh, they no longer talk to him. And now he's lost his office. For Nightline, I'm Steve Osinsami in Montgomery, Alabama.